Thank you very much, Sue, <laughs> and uh, very happy, Louise and myself, uh, to be new uh, um, participant to your organization, and also very happy to share our experience of applying artificial intelligence um, to the sales volumes forecasting. And uh, we wanted, in fact, to, to do that by sharing an example on the yogurt category, as you can see, so fast moving consumer goods. And this uh, yogurt company was considering launching a, a bigger format of yogurts. And uh, before launching this uh, innovation, uh, the company was willing for sure to get a solid sales volume forecast. So what we did to do so, uh, we proposed, um, I would say, a typical quant survey with about 200 respondents, 200 consumers, buyers of yogurts, and for, for sure, representative of the category in terms of age, sex, and brands both. However, um, our client had some reservations about the capacity of volume forecast tools in general to fully integrate marketing plans in, you know, and I would say this is clearly a very important and challenging topic. We know that uh, consumers can react um, to marketing actions very differently. And 200 respondents might look for sure a bit small to cover the diversity of all the responses. And that's the case also for, for the yogurt market. Each consumer is unique and reacts to marketing actions his or her own way. So because we have different habits, uh, we, we go to different purchase channels, we look at different media, and also because we, we react to, to the innovation our own way or so. So we, we needed for this innovation to cover the diversity of the yogurt consumers and uh, of their individual behaviors, starting with 200 respondents and this has been possible thanks to AI. That's so when Louise, <laughs> our volume forecast expert, comes in. So Louise, could you please explain us concretely how this can happen? Yes, with pleasure. So <clears throat> that's indeed when uh, AI and micro individual modeling start being involved. Concretely, to calculate volume forecasts, we first need to understand how the innovations enter the shopping basket of each of our consumers. Among our consumer group, we know that some buy the category often, others buy less frequently, and some buy large quantities, others only from time to time. Some are loyal to some brands and others prefer private labels, for instance. So it's really necessary to keep this information at individual level so that, the, so that the, the richness of the different profiles between consumers is fully respected. The model instead will integrate the information individual by individual and not at a macro level, not at a total level. It is a first stepping stone in a fully integrated micro modeling, which connects all the influences on purchase at an individual level from hand to hand. Then we do the same for the marketing actions. We know that some people watch a lot of TV, others spend more time on the internet or on their mobile, some being more sensitive to advertising and others to the in-store discounting, for instance. So our objective is to respect these behaviors and maintain, and maintain them at an individual level for the resulting volume forecasts. So 
Let's come back to the 200 uh, yogurt consumers composing our research sample. And now please let's have a look to Vicky. Uh, Vicky is a young mother with three kids at home. And for sure, with three kids at home, she needs a significant amount of yogurt and buys about 36 units uh, per week across all brands. We know that Vicky likes the innovation having a large format. Thus, if the innovation was available, Vicky would have a high probability, let's say 70% in our example, uh, it's an high probability to buy the new product. Just note that this figure of 70% uh, summarizes the likelihood to be part of her shopping basket and the share of her purchases in yogurt. Now let's virtually simulate if Vicky would have bought the product depending on the different retail and different marketing actions. So thanks to AI, we populate the virtual clones, uh, virtual Vickies, from the real one. All of these virtual Vickies are trundling through their lives. This week, next week, the week after. All virtual Vickies start with the same level of might buy -ness, the same purchase frequency, the same weight of purchase, and the same shopping basket. But the things that each Vicky encounters, promotions, advertising, and so on, are different. And they allow the model to predict, taking everything into account, each of the time that each virtual Vicky will purchase the innovation over the next two years. So for example, one week, uh, Vicky went to Desco, but uh, the product was not available yet. So her purchase fell down to zero. Another week, before going to Walmart for weekly grocery purchases, she has been a TV ad about the innovation. And this TV communication raised her awareness of the new yogurt, and this increased Vicky's purchase for the innovation. What we've done for Vicky is also done for Mary, for Jeff, and all of the 200 respondents we had at the beginning. The model uh, with in artificial intelligence basically makes a very large grid with all the weeks and all the people. The model takes one person at a time. We know what is the effect for this person of each marketing activity for each period of time. At the end, it predicts week by week whether consumers will buy or not buy, so generating a virtual panel. We can create up to 10,000 virtual entities per respondent. Virtual shoppers are not exact clones of the interviewed respondents for sure. They cover all the possible combinations of influences and outcomes to reflect the diversity of consumers in the yogurt category. At the end, the model with artificial intelligence learns from the behavior of the 2 million virtual shoppers, and as it does so, the model becomes increasingly more stable. Then, to finish, we add up the volumes for each person to get the overall volumes forecast. And because the model knows what activity created what response in each person, we are also able to see which sales can be attributed to distribution, to advertising, or promotional activity. Thanks to AI and micro-modeling, we get finally a better understanding of the consumers and the impact of the marketing activities on the buying process, leading to a sales forecast that is closer to the real behavior of our consumer. Okay, thank you very much, Louise. You're welcome. <laughs> That's it for us. <laughs>